Hi everyone, you're all very welcome to our Investigate Woodlands webinar celebrating Biodiversity Week 2022. So it officially ended on Sunday, but this week the Green Schools team will be sharing recordings of the live talks such as this one and activities related to biodiversity. So be sure to check out their event page. Um, my own name is Rachel Geary and I'm joined today by with them um, Claire, Maeve and Rob all working on the Green Schools team. I oversee learning about forests and the Quill Biog programmes and this year we've been very fortunate to receive funding from the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine to run Investigate Woodlands workshops in green schools that are working on the theme of biodiversity and to host a few seminar, um, webinars throughout the year. So this is our second one. The last one was during tree week. Today's webinar, of course, is going to be all about trees and biodiversity and you might, which you might find in our woodlands and hedgerows. It's going to be about 40 minutes and then we'll take some questions and answers <coughs> towards the end. Um, so just before I begin, a few points to note. Um, the session is being recorded, um, but it is only the facilitator's screen that's being shared, so mine and then the guys from answering questions. Um, we're going to ask that you keep your microphones off. Um, if you want to ask any questions, just pop them into the chat box and we'll get to them when we can. Um, also, as Maeve mentioned there, while some of you are waiting, um, we are uh, um, handing out some spot prizes and that's um, being given out to those that are engaging during the seminars and for any social media posts during the day. So they've popped the social media tags into the chat there. They're Green Schools Ireland and at Leaf Ireland, hashtag investigate woodlands and hashtag bio week 2022. So um, yesterday's winner was sixth class from Rathgar Oak. So they will be getting some spot prizes from birdfood.ie. So be sure to um, pop your questions in and you might be in with a chance of winning a spot prize for your school. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We'll get going with the webinar then, guys. Um, so it's going to be a bit of questions and answers. So you can get ready to pop your answers into the um, chat box there when you're ready. So again, you're all very welcome. Um, just to begin, guys, can any of you name any of the native trees that you might find in our hedgerows or woodlands or maybe even in your school grounds? So native trees, we're referring to trees that have been here since the last ice age. Introduced trees would be trees that have been brought to Ireland in recent years, maybe for timber production or because they look pretty. So can you name any trees that you might find in our woodlands and hedgerows? And you can pop your answers again in the chat. Oak, ash, beech, very good. You, excellent. Hazel, very good. Oak keeps popping up, excellent, well done. Birch, ash, sycamore. The sycamore is actually one of our non-native trees, but it is very common. We see it a lot around the countryside. Ash and oak, birch, all common. Very good. Okay. Strawberry tree, yeah. It can be found down towards the south. Uh, very good. Okay. So next question then, now that you all know, definitely you've got um, loads of cor correct answers there. So having a look at the picture, guys, um, this tree is common in Ireland. It likes to live in wet places. And it's actually also called the Irish mahogany. Now, if you know mahogany, it's a very strong wood. Um, but so this is known as the Irish mahogany because it's used um, for building. It's very strong. So again, popping your answers into the chat if you know what this tree is. Ash. Not the ash tree, no. Hazel, no. I'll give you a clue, it begins with A. Alder, very good, okay. So, alder, guys. <clears throat> oh, that slide isn't going on. So, alder is one of Ireland's most widely distributed trees and it can be found growing in damp areas. Um, beside rivers and locks 
And like most trees, alder flowers before the leaves come out. So right now, if you were to look out your window, all our trees are in leaf. But over the last few months, you would have might maybe seen some catkins hanging from the tree. So these are the flowers of the tree. And you would have seen them hanging maybe from the willow and again off our alder. So catkins are generally kind of drooping flowers, but without petals. So this is our alder, again, very common to our hedgerows and woodlands. What about this one, guys? So having a look at the pictures here and just to point out the black buds that you would see during the winter when the leaves are falling off. So that's how we identify our trees during the winter. In the summer, it's much easier when the leaves are on. Um, so this one, a very um, big clue here is my wood is good for making hurls. At the moment, the tree is suffering a little bit, so a little bit harder to get the wood to make the hurls these days. So popping your answers in again, and the black buds is another big clue. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone gets this one right all the time. As soon as we mention hurls, yes, everyone's getting it right. So the ash tree, <laughs> very good, guys. So we have ash. Ash is one of our commonest trees in the Irish hedgerows. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, <clears throat> at the moment it's suffering from ash dieback disease. So we're not allowed to plant any more ash at the moment um, and it's taking a big hit. Um, so I was in a school the other day and they were telling me they know of a local hurley maker and they're looking at using things like bamboo now, but the boys in the school reckoned it certainly wasn't as good as our ash for making the hurls. So ash coppices very well and it makes excellent firewood. So coppicing, guys, is when you cut the tree right back down to the stump and then you let it regrow and it normally grows these long rods and different trees can be used for different um, products. For example, the willow, when you coppice it, it's used for, the rods are used for basket making. Ash is a very important tree for wildlife because it lives very long time and it supports lots of different species, okay? The ash, one of our very important trees. <clears throat> so our next tree here, guys, is called, often referred to as the lady of the forest. And the first letter in the Ohm tree alphabet. So having a look at the leaves there, you can actually see um, the little pointed leaves and kind of serrated at the edge. So again, when we're identifying trees, we often look at the shape of the leaf. Are they pointy? Are they rounded? Have they serrated edges? So like something's been nibbling them almost at the edge. So again, <clears throat> can anyone tell me what this beautiful tree is? One of my favorites, I have to say, I love to see it. Two types, oak, elm, nope, neither oak or elm, I'm afraid. <laughs> very good, hazel, not hazel, birch. Okay, very good. So a few um, correct answers there. A little bit trickier than the last one anyway. So for those of you who got that, well done. It is the birch. And we have, oops, sorry guys, my slides aren't going on. Birch. So there we have the, the, um, the birch tree. So we have two types. We have downy and silver. And both of these, they're kind of, they're quite different to our other trees. They're very delicate little leaves and delicate fine branches. The birch will grow on poor soils and um, the downy birch does quite good on wet ground, a little bit better than our silver birch. Silver birch likes a bit more drainage um, and like the alder tree, its seeds are very popular with small seed eating birds such as our siskin and red pole. So again, one of our common trees, very elegant. This is why it's known as the lady of the forest. So moving on to our next one. Um, so this would be found maybe more as an understory tree. So not in the high canopy. My flowers and berries are collected to make medicine sometimes. And I'm called the poor man's cold and flu remedy. So does anyone know what this lovely tree is? <clears throat> Again, very common in our hedgerows. <laughs> very good. Very good, everyone's answering correctly, my goodness. Well done, folks. You've obviously been doing your homework or learning about trees in your schools because you're all getting the right answer there. 
So it is the elder tree. Very good, guys. Well done. And the elder flowers. So native to Ireland again, deciduous. And I haven't mentioned deciduous or evergreen yet, but deciduous trees, you probably know this already, are trees that lose their leaves during the winter time. So generally a little bit softer than our evergreen leaves. Um, and evergreen, of course, means that they keep their, their leaves throughout the winter. So elder is a deciduous native tree, one of our most well-known native trees. And that um, was shown there because you all got the answer correct. Very good. Um, it's exceptionally good for wildlife and fits into any hedgerow. So really good if you're planting hedgerows in your schools, definitely pop in some elder there and it grows really well from cuttings. Um, and again, excellent for wildlife. So in the spring, you so over the last few months, you've probably heard it buzzing with wildlife. Insects often feed on the flowers um, during the springtime. So both the elderberries and the flowers are actually used in cooking. So you can collect the flowers and make a nice elderflower juice from them. So I would highly recommend that if you've got some elder growing in your school grounds or at home. Okay. Now, you may have seen our background. Um, so the tree here behind me, um, I'm in full bloom in May. And I have many nicknames, including Quickthorn. And if I grow by myself in a field, I may be known as a fairy tree. So any of you know this beautiful tree? And again, if you look out your windows at the moment, or if you're driving home from school, you will see the hedgerows full of this at the moment. And the flowers are looking particularly beautiful. <laughs> Definitely, you have all been doing lots of homework. Lots of correct answers here, very good. So it does look like the cherry blossom or the apple tree, but it's not. Um, and a lot of you answering correctly there, the hawthorn tree, well done again, guys. Again, yeah, cherry blossom is popping up there a few times. So not the cherry blossom. So our native hawthorn or also known as quickthorn, as I mentioned, it actually has a number of different names. The May bush, because of course it's beautiful in, in flower at the moment during the month of May. White thorn, it's also called, and it's an excellent hedge. Um, it's got really thorny, gnarly branches. So very often and throughout um, agricultural history, they would have grown it um, to keep livestock in because it's actually really, um, if you cut it down low, it shoots out lots of gnarly thorny branches and of course it stops the livestock from leaving the field it also probably will stop people from breaking into a farm as well so it's a great barrier and it's actually very good for firewood and charcoal as well but brilliant for wildlife brilliant from a farming perspective for keeping the livestock in and people out <laughs> um, so lots of really useful values there for the hawthorn tree so the next one, guys, I am the tree of knowledge. And if you eat my nuts, you can gain wisdom. So having a look at the pictures there, you've got the catkins on the first two and the lovely little flower. Um, you've got the nuts of this particular tree. And then looking at the shape of the leaves, guys, they're a little, quite rounded with this little point at the top, which makes it, which is very distinctive. So Pop your answers in there again into the chat box. Well, yeah, <laughs> very good. Not the willow, um, most people guessing correctly there. Yeah, very good. Well done, guys. Hazel, you hardly need me to give this presentation because you're all <laughs> getting the answers correct. Um, so the hazel, again, another native species with many uses and an ancient history. So it's been used throughout time excuse me, hazelnuts are actually one of the foods associated with the very earliest settlements in Ireland. Um, so they've been able to trace this back, but they've been able to see that the really early settlers were actually, one of their food sources was the nuts from the hazel trees. Um, the hazel timber was also used to build their huts back in the ancient times. Hazel bushes like the willow and the ash again, they can be cut right back again. So coppiced 
and the stump will regrow all these long rods and the sl slender timber rods that grow um, <clears throat> can be used to be used for wattle and daub and also for fencing in times gone by. Hazel also grows then as an understory in oak and ash woodlands, but it will also grow on its own as a pure hazel wood. So if any of you have been to the burn to visit, you'll often see <clears throat> these vast areas of hazel growing and really beautiful if you ever get the opportunity to visit the burn and walk in amongst these hazel woods. Otherwise, they'll grow very well under the bigger trees such as oak and ash. So well done again to everyone for getting this one right. I think this is probably the most easy one of our trees to identify because it's very distinctive to the other ones. Um, so I have prickly leaves. I'm evergreen. So all the other trees that we've just talked about have been deciduous. This one is one of our evergreens. Um, the birds love to eat my red berries in the winter. So I'm sure everyone will get this one right. Yeah. <clears throat> Holly, fantastic guys. Yeah, so holly, again, very common in our hedgerows throughout Ireland, um, a small native evergreen tree. And unlike the other trees, um, the holly actually has a separate male and a female tree. And only the female one has the red berries. And these red berries are a very important food source for birds as the colder months move in during the winter. And um, because a lot of the other foods from the trees will have already been eaten. So this is a time where food is scarce for the birds. So very important. And thrushes in particular can strip the berries of a tree in very little time. So they can um, defend a holly tree. If, if a thrush finds a holly tree, it'll defend it and eat the berries very quickly off of it. Um, one of our last trees here, guys, before we move on to the other biodiversity that we might find in the woodlands, can anyone, this one is a little bit trickier to identify from the leaves because we actually have a lot of different species of this particular type of tree. Um, but the big clue here is that I grow in wet places. I do very well in wet soil. I'm easy to bend and I'm used for making fences, archways, baskets, and sometimes even artwork. And then the other little question there is, who do you think might have been nibbling my leaves in this top picture up here? So again, lots of species, very good. Yeah, excellent guys. So the willow, very good. Yeah, all coming in right there. So willow again, very common. Many of you probably even have it in your garden or your school grounds. And um, several varieties, as I said, or many of them native to Ireland. Um, they, again, like the other trees that we mentioned, they can be grown and um, they can be coppiced. But what's unusual about the willow as well, that it can be grown very easily from cuttings. So you can take a cutting from a willow tree, stick it into the soil and it actually grows new roots and very successful. So it does very well um, in wet ground. It can be coppiced and the cuttings will regrow very quickly. Um, Nowadays, some of the species of willow are actually grown for biomass. So willow tends to grow very quickly. And as I say, it does well in lots of different soil types and wet ground. And as we know, Ireland has a lot of wet ground. So there, the willow is actually being grown for biomass and provide, it provides a renewable source of energy. So again, very good tree, has lots of different uses. I think our last tree, guys, and what better tree to finish off our species with with this one. I am known as the king of the forest and I grow from a tiny dot, dot, dot. <laughs> so I'm sure everyone will get this one. Yeah. Excellent, guys. Whale skull there. Oak. Yeah, very good. Oak. Excellent. This man has lots of whale skulls answering the correct answer there again. Oak, guys. Very good. Yeah. So I think the acorns and the shape of the oak leaf, guys, is very distinctive, again, unlike the other ones. So I grow from a tiny acorn, as you can see there in the top picture, and that's its little tap root starting to appear there. Um, the oak, the Irish for oak is dar. So if any of you are named Dara, and there's different spellings of Dara, of course, there's D-A-R-A, -A, there's D-A-R-A-G-H, D-A-R-A-G-H, sorry, my apologies. 
And this name is derived from the Irish of oak tree, okay? So the oak produces nuts called acorns. Again, in the top picture, these are eaten by squirrels and lots of other animals will also eat them. The oak is a very important tree. Um, it provides a habitat for over 400 different species. So Habitat Guys is a place where wildlife live. It's a home for wildlife. And the oak tree is very special because it provides a habitat for so many different species. We have two different types of oak in Ireland. We have sessile and pendunculate. And the wood from the oak tree produces a really high quality timber and it can be used for furniture making and flooring. So oak is a very slow growing tree. So if you are buying oak for furniture or for flooring, it tends to be more expensive than the other wood and um, the wood items that you might buy and um, again because it's so slow growing okay so the perfect tree to finish off our trees um but we can't talk about trees guys without talking about all the other species or biodiversity that might live on them under them and um, or in them even in some cases so trees like to live in communities just like us okay so we don't ever see a tree completely isolated. Even if you see one in a car park that's got concrete all around it, if you take a closer look with a magnifying glass or a hand lens, you will be sure to find bugs, you'll find lichens, you might even find mosses or ferns growing on the trees if they're very old. So trees are never alone, okay? They've always got something else living on them. In relation to woodlands, we often have different layers of a woodland. So we've the canopy layer, which is the top layer with all the leaves. And what we're going to talk about next is the understory. So we have understory trees, which might be things like hazel and elder. But then we also have ground floor plants that will grow as well, which we're going to move on to in the next few slides. I'm conscious of time, so I won't spend as much time going through these different species, but really nice just to show you a few pictures and give you a feel for all the other types of species that the trees might be living near or beside, okay? So um, plants that, might that you might find on the woodland floor, you have um, wild garlic. So if any of you are lucky enough to live near a lovely piece of woodland at the moment, very often at this time of year, the bottom of the floor will be blanketed with things like blueberry, uh, sorry, not blueberries, <laughs> bluebells and wild garlic. And um, so I know here in Kerry, we've got Bally Seedy Woods here just on my doorstep and beautiful um, big carpets of wild garlic um, growing. OK, and the bottom photo here, this beautiful little purpley pink flower is Herb Robert. Um, so all parts of wild garlic are edible. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. So it's lots of different uses in food. The leaves themselves have a mild garlic flavour and they can be often eaten either raw or cooked. Some people make pesto out of them. Um, and then in relation to the herb, Robert, you'll find this growing maybe in areas of shade. It is these small, beautiful little dainty pink flowers and they appear between May and September. So you'll find these growing along the hedgerow or in the woodlands this time of the year. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the leaves actually emit a little unpleasant um, scent as well. So take a, a, a close uh, um, look at them the next time and maybe have a little smell and see if you can get any um, rather unpleasant smell from them. The other um, species that you'll find growing in woodland areas or in hedgerows or maybe even in your own garden in the school um, are things like mosses, brambles and ivy. So our temperate forests, which are also known as Atlantic or Ken Celtic rainforests even, are the perfect places for things like mosses, lichens and fungi to grow. Um, mosses, which is this top picture up here, these are part of a group also know, are known as bryophytes and there are over 20,000 species of bryophyte on earth. Okay, so the bramble, I think everyone is familiar with this one. The brambles are hardy and determined and they're a very important part of the woodland um, ecosystem. They, they grow um, very readily along the woodland floor and they often protect actually young trees that are growing. Um, the bramble uses a really powerful roots to grow rapidly and they'll grow in almost any environment, but again, very common in our woodlands and hedgerows. 
So later on in the summer, I'm sure you're all familiar with the lovely berries that grow. So have a look for them. You can make lovely jams out of them. Um, and then the last picture down here is the ivy. And ivy is really important. It's a, it um, supports a huge array of wildlife, providing um, places for birds to nest. And then the berries themselves that we see later in the year, they're a really important food source. And um, because again, just like the holly, they're there at a time of the year when there isn't a lot of other food available. Um, it's a myth that ivy will kill the trees. Um, it won't. It might, in some cases, if you've got a lot of ivy growing on a really old tree and there's a storm, it might weaken it and because of the weight of it, but ivy itself won't actually kill the tree. So that's a, a little myth that we probably hear all too often. Um, in this picture here, the three plants you're looking at a bugle, this one with the little blue flower on it, again, likes to grow in shady areas, <clears throat> excuse me. Ferns, now we've lots of different types of ferns. This is just one of them here. So look out for these. They love to grow in dark, damp areas. Again, this one is growing um, kind of at the bottom at the base of a wall. So a little bit of shade as well. And then the last one, the wild strawberry, um, again, grows in woodland areas. I've got it growing in my garden under a few trees. So a great one to introduce, great for biodiversity as well. Um, sorrel, sorrel is actually edible. We've got two different types of sorrel. Again, doesn't necessarily need shade to grow, but again, you will find it in, um, in the understory of woodland areas and growing along hedgerows or embankments again. And this beautiful one here, the lovely pink flower, red campion. So again, look out for all of these um, as you go for your walks or maybe have a little investigation around your school grounds. You might find that you actually have a lot of these growing if you've got any hedgerow area or a little wild area in your school grounds or at home, of course. So I think one of my last questions for you guys, what am I and why would I be important to trees? So I'm going to have a look at the chat box here again. So I love to grow with trees and on dead wood. <clears throat> Any, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, very good. Decomposition, excellent. Well done, guys, Funga, yeah. So that one was very easy. Everyone's getting it right, mushrooms again, yeah. Excellent, guys. So fungi, also known as mushrooms, so bo both answers were correct. Um, these are really important because they actually help to recycle dead wood and leaves on the woodland floor. <clears throat> And would you be surprised to know that it is the original internet, actually 1.3 billion years old. So yeah, that's right. That it's, it's actually known as the, the original World Wide Web because it mimics the very first organism on Earth, the fungi, or sorry, fungi mimics the World Wide Web, or vice versa, sorry. <laughs> the mycelium or the branching of the thread-like vegetation portion under the ground. So not the part that you're looking at here in the photo, but the thread-like um, part that goes under the ground. It's almost like the internet under our feet. And it's this network, it's like the super highway basically. It provides vital information between the natural world, transferring the right nutrients to the right plants to ensure optimal vitality. So really interesting. Um, Really great to do a project on the fungi. Now, as you know, some of them are poisonous. So I wouldn't recommend going out, grabbing every mushroom you find and trying to ID it. Just from um, a little distance, you can record it, draw them, maybe take some photographs and come back then and try to find out a little bit more about the different mushrooms that you might find growing on the dead wood in your school grounds or at home again. Okay. Sorry, another question, a few questions for you and I'm conscious of time now, so I'll zip through these. This is, um, you might have to take a second look at this picture, but what is this? Who made me? Where might you find one and what is it made from? So I don't expect you to put all the answers. You might just pick one or two of the, the questions there and pop your answers in the box. So, yeah, absolutely. So we, I think it's fairly obvious that it's a nest. Where might you find it? Maybe anyone want to guess that one? So yeah, so bird's nest made from twigs, other little maybe feathers they might find, or even parts of, they might use moss or lichens, things like that. Very good sticks, 
robin's nest grass moss feathers excellent guys um and you'll find these obviously maybe in a tree but you might also find them um under the eaves of your house or your attic let's say if there's a hole in the wall birds will, might be found nesting um let's say in the eaves or, or near where your drain pipes are around the schools um, or in old sheds or barns as well, you often will find nests um, of different bird species there as well. So nest sites are really important. And again, that's why if we provide the trees, we're providing nesting sites for these birds. Some birds, as I said, will even nest in amongst thick um, growths of ivy as well, okay? Ooh. Now, these are interesting little ones. Um, I'm not sure if any, any of you have ever seen these, but what are these and who made them? So possibly slightly are one of our trickier questions. Um, so the first one here will be found growing on oak trees and the other one on lime trees. Now I just see on the slide, I've actually mixed them up. So the middle picture is actually the oak tree with these little balls that you'll see in the last picture growing on them. And the first tree, sorry, is the lime tree. So I've mixed up the text underneath those two slides, guys. So anyone has oak gall, very good. Oak gall, wasp gall, excellent. So very often that's a, a trickier question. Not many people will get that right, so well done. So the first one, sorry, I had this mixed up. This is the lime tree. Um, the pointed nail, nail galls are caused by microscopic mites which overwinter in the bark of the lime trees, and then they crawl out onto the underside of the leaves in the spring to feed. And these mites then secrete chemicals into the leaves, causing them to produce these unusual kind of um, little projections that you see on the leaf there, into which the mites move and continue feeding during the summer, okay? So have a look. Now, lime trees may not be as common as some of the trees that I mentioned a while ago during the presentation, but if you do spot a lime tree, you can have a look for those. Now, most of you answered this one correctly. Um, these are the oak apple gall, home to the larvae of a solitary wasp. So gall wasps larvae secrete chemicals, again, just like the midge and the, the other one, that induce the formation of these little balls, okay? Um, these galls are part of the biodiversity. They're totally healthy. Um, so it's not like the tree has got any disease or sickness or anything. Sometimes if you take a closer look at them, you might find a little hole in the autumn time. And this means that the wasp has actually eaten its way out and flown off into the nearby woods. OK, guys, so just to wrap things up, then, if any of you are going out for a walk around your school grounds or in your community, we've got lots of resources on our website. So if you go to www.leafireland.org, You'll find a range of activities there for biodiversity, water and climate. Um, but these specific spotter sheets, we have them for um, the different months of the year. You can see the little pictures there of specific species. And on the back side of those spotter sheets, you've got areas where you can fill in your own species that you might find that aren't on the front page. So little activity sheets there that um, you can download for free on our website if you so wish. Um, other things that you might like to do in your school are create little woodland habitats. So we were talking before we started the webinar about how schools are often very, um, there's got lots of concrete and play areas, but very little space for wildlife. So we would always encourage schools and communities to just, it doesn't have to be a huge area, but just in a little corner in your school grounds, maybe putting some logs around a particular area and just letting things grow. So not mowing or strimming, maybe even um, introducing a few little woodland plants, whether it be primrose or bluebell, um, into areas of shade and just observing, recording and seeing what species will grow there. Um, you might, in time, if you're lucky enough, you might find some amphibians, some frogs, or some bugs and beetles in this photo here. We've got the cockchafer beetle. Um, some schools have started to lay hedges using natural products such as hazel rods or willow rods. You might even put in a willow dome or something like that. So anything at all that you can do to help biodiversity or wildlife, 
is greatly um, appreciated by all the birds and bugs out there. Of course, one of the easiest things you can do if you've got space is to grow a tree or some native shrubs or flowers. You can also start by collecting acorns or hazelnuts in the autumn, plant them in a little leaf compost. So you can see we've done this in the blue box here. Let them grow for a, a year or two and then split them up and divide them out and pot them on either into bigger pots, give them another growing season or plant them directly into the ground. OK, so that you can see there the little tap root, the little oak then will emerge. Um, so we've got videos and resources available online to help you with these kind of activities. The other program that I mentioned and um, that I oversee is on Quill Bioc, where we create little habitats in schools. You can see in the top picture there, the students are planting native trees, suppressing the grass with bark mulch, and then it provides in time a lovely outdoor space for students to learn and relax and enjoy nature. OK, so. Um, if you are going out to investigate your school grounds or your community guys, we always recommend that you plan ahead and prepare. So wearing appropriate clothing, obviously if it's raining, wearing um, wet gear in this time of the year, you wanna be watching for insect bites. They're unpleasant, you don't want to get them. So maybe wearing long sleeves if you are going to, into the woodland areas, wearing your sunscreen, a hat, etc. Bring your little notebook, um, whether it be for science or for the junior classes, you can always record and report. So you can report your sightings back to the data center or simply recording in, the, in your nature notebook, okay? So that's pretty much it, guys, before we move on to the um, questions and answers. We mentioned already at the beginning that um, schools that are active there during the questions and answers or sharing later on social media and um, using the hashtags for today, you're in with a chance to win a prize for your school, um, kindly su um, supplied by bird, sorry, birdfood.ie. And again, the hashtags for today were Green Schools Ireland and Leaf Ireland and Investigate Woodland and BioWeek 2022. So 